happy to have Kenny Moore here for our book series, uh, our keynote series of the summer, uh, starting the summer off. And um, again, we have to give you a hand for being here because this is a complete honor for us. So. so, Ken, this is is this your first stateside signing ever in general, or have you done a few before, right? It's like a poker signing. I mean, states, I've been to several conventions. Right. Uh, so you're basically sitting in the booth and people come. Right. And this is your first classy event. Right? Yeah. 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 We're happy to have it as your first yeah, classy event. I, know. I wanted to start off asking you first about I Kill Giants first because this was your first US um, release. Um, Ten years as the anniversary, right? I mean, as far as like the anniversary that you Was it five? Yeah, I'm sorry. But it's been seven, right? Since then, you know, it's grown in popularity. Chris Columbus is actually going to be doing it for his Treehouse Pictures yeah. um, releases on coming soon. How's it been in response for you? It was incredible. I the thing is like the, the comments I did before I did Giants were uh, I was publishing in Spain, and so they were let's say a little more arty because I was in art school, art school, so so a little bit more obscure. And every time I put out something, like nobody read it, and you never really got too much response. It was like a completely new world for me, like people actually saying stuff about what I was saying. And it's been really beautiful because it's been it's a book that's has had like a really long life. I, I wanted to do comics and but I really didn't know if I was, was able to do them. So I, I just took one year and a half, did it, uh, I mean used my savings and did it. And what I thought was I'll just see the outcome and I'll see, you know, that means that I'm made, I can do that or I can make a living or not. But the truth is that sometimes you really, they, they, you really need, not to need them, but they will do good to you. And it, to me, that meant, in a way, somehow like a confirmation, like, okay, you can, do, you can still keep on doing comics. So it, yeah, it made the difference between me doing, I don't know, other job and the comics on the side to really decide to or full time to do this. Right, so this, was it at, this, at some point where you had to question whether it's still going to be working for comics or not, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and so even before then, what got you into comics, really? I mean, were you buying lots of titles as a kid and then? Yeah, I was reading lots of comics. Well, to give you a background, but maybe some of you don't know, I, my, my father is Japanese, my mother is Spanish, uh, Spaniard, so from Spain. I was born in Spain, and I grew up in in Spain, but surrounded by Japanese culture and going to Japanese school and stuff. So part of what Japanese culture is comics and especially with Katsu Kids. So we always had like a concept manga around us, uh, even at Japanese school, and then comics in uh, regular Spanish comics or French, which uh, you usually find in the book store. Um, and, but my, and I always read it, and I always enjoyed them, I always drawn them. These stories that you were coming up with, you know, was it that you wanted to go for more slice of life? Because it makes me think of Tasumi's work, Taiyo Matsumoto's work. Were these were these mangaka also influences on your work as well when doing these type of stories? Yeah, certainly. And not only just like mangaka, but even when I watch, let's say, old movies, I really like them when I don't know, like when or old books. I don't know. Uh, you, you see like what was life at the time, but at the same time you when they're good, like you totally relate to what's going on there, uh, regardless of the setting uh, or the country. So that's something I, I, I try to do, and in a way it's like a very selfish thing, but I'm very curious to see like how this book will be, uh, how I will feel reading it like in 10 years, or if I live somewhere else, um, because it, it's like a capsule in time. And yeah, for many stories, I just use like stuff that happened to me like almost in real time. So the last frame thing was more or less something that happened to a friend of me when we got stuck in Tokyo and we met some women that we didn't really know what they wanted and my friend was okay because he was drunk but I was like really tense all that night mm -hmm. thinking that maybe they wanted all of our money. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, if I we've been through that, I'd, I'd rather do a story out of it. Right. <laughs> and keep us living here. So even even stuff that happened with, you know, speaking of a non-fiction sense, the cat. You have a love for cats, obviously. It's, it's really big. Um, and you have three stories in there regarding this one, and it relates to this one particular cat in a sense. Um, I love the, the last story where you decided that the cat belongs to everyone. 
uh, because he, he was able to save your life in a sense. But have you owned a cat at this point? No, 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 but like, uh, it might be difficult for you, you New Yorkers, to realize that in Japan, sometimes uh, you, you live in places where they don't allow you to have pets. Yeah. So you can't. And then sometimes, like me, you're poor, and so you cannot own a pet. You know, like, if he eats good stuff, you don't eat stuff. So, no, not yet, but I have still like lots of cats that come to my house mm -hmm. and they pee. And mm -hmm. <laughs> so some of that, some of that, some of that was actually really true. Oh like, no, no, that like eighty percent was factual. Nice. Like I hear them and they come around and they pee and they kind of like fight. It's like I want them to come, but I don't want them to pee because it smells. Right. I like them <laughs> and I hate them and, and I love them. Actually. Right. That's the thing with cats. I can understand. Yeah. So if you did have a cat, what would you name the cat? Male or female? Wow, I don't know. Because this is your one opportunity where if you did yeah. engage yourself into owning a cat. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I, because like the one time I, in the, it's really in the story, I, I lived in a house where we, I sublet house and came to the cat. And I just called him, well, I was in, in Canada, so Chaton. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So it was very like, non you know. Okay. Because, uh, <laughs> cat, cat, but. So I'll I'll think about that. Okay, I'll, yeah. You know, I'm gonna think about it. Next yeah. time I see you, I'm gonna. I hope I have a question again. Oh, I hope I have a cat. Right. That'd be, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What's the What's the next work coming up after this? You know, because this mm -hmm. is this is gonna last a long time. I mean, because as far as U.S. release work, mm -hmm. this is a long stretch of time between yeah. I Kill Giants and Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I mean, um, but yeah, this is very satisfying at the end of the day too. But is there any more work we can see from you in the near future? I hope so. Yeah, I'm working on something new in Japan, and the idea would be to have like a one single volume with a single self-contained story. And and when you do these short stories, the the logic will be that you do something a little longer right after that. The problem with me being that the magazine where I was publishing this closed down, so I had to like look for another publisher. Uh, but in theory. I would like it to be more or less the same universe, let's say, but just a l longer one. So if this was like a tapas, tapas bar, then doing like a full menu with the recipes I kind of found I see. in the way. And then I hope I'll be able to do something in the US too. Because, um, I don't know, when I write my things, it has a certain well, atmosphere to it. Yeah. But it's kind of limited. So I would really like to try, you know, just to do fun. Yeah. Stop people fighting and stuff. No, you don't need to do that. I, well, I, I mean, if they do fight, they don't have to put on shorts. You know? I know, right. but I don't know, like, uh, with this one, it happened, like, they told me you can do anything, and I just right. came up with slice of life, and I have the impression that that's kind of my, my universe. Yeah. But I kind of, like, can, uh, how's it, adhere or collaborate right. with other people with other universe? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think the US market right now is pretty much opened itself up to a lot of great similar themes as well. Um, if you look at This Month's Summer by Jillian Tamaya, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, um, or even with Cory Dr. Rose in real life, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's not necessarily the same content, mm -hmm. but it's that, again, slice of life thing where it's taken a, a long time for like more casual readers to get into that type of thing. So I think, I think the market here is actually opening itself doors, and I think you picked the right time to have material out like this. Mm -hmm. so. How, how do you see your work going in the near future as well? Or even in the late future? I don't know, in the future, I think it's just going to take me way longer for many other people <laughs> to find the one thing. So, I, I, I've been really lucky so far, you know, putting I could join in the US, painting in Japan, mm -hmm. I put out stuff in Europe, in Spain, mm -hmm. and that's allowed me to try different, I don't know, storytelling ways, mm -hmm. approach how to talk to different people, mm. uh, draw differently, and ultimately I just want something that's very really transparent. I don't really want something that's very flesh or anything. I just want something right. that, and that's for something, something that took me a lot of time in Henshi. Mm. Just doing something, is it like a storytelling that's very, really, yeah, that's not present. Right. Mm, I don't know, so I hope that I managed to like, keep working, you know, in the US and Japan, mm -hmm. and, See where that takes me because I don't really have like a very clear plan. Does anybody in the audience have any questions as well? Uh, hands up. Some people look like they're pensively thinking, but they're not sure. A little scared. Don't be scared. Don't be shy. Yeah, you, you, you or you can yell it out if you like. You know. Yeah, one of the stories that Hinge you compare coming up with ideas from stories to riding a bike right now is that something you actually still do this day, like ride around just to come up with ideas.
Yeah, yeah, and it helps a lot. I don't know for other people, but to me, yeah, like the one thing I have uh, have a really hard time with is like sitting and being still. So I've heard and I've used and it works that some people what they do is like they put like a bottle of wine, let's say, underneath their feet and they roll it so you keep like, like your blood like flowing because it's, otherwise it's just like stuck in your feet and so you, and long time ago like months uh, in Spain but I guess like pretty much in all Europe, all Europe they used to study uh, what uh, standing and walking in circles and that's because of the same thing and like helps you be more uh, aware let's say but yeah so sometimes an idea you have to make it physical and um, ride by bicycle through it and then find what you're trying to do because if you're sitting mm, you don't get it mm. do you have a drawer standing up um i would like to try that i still haven't tried it but i've heard of friends that do yeah they do it and it seems it's nice um, and yeah, like if you're rather than be sitting for eight hours, I'd rather be standing. So I have to try that, but I still have to have like the find the right table and everything. But yeah, I would love to try that. And I heard yeah, it makes uh, even for cinema, there's people that you know. Yeah, friends that are film editors. Yeah, like Walter Murch, I think. Or yeah, he, does. he does. It's standing. It makes sense. Yeah, I'm still soon. I'll be standing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for henching, I use everything. Uh, so I combine stuff, uh, techniques, because it's short story, so it allows you to try things. And so I, I did pencil, pen, brush, and uh, like marker. And the one thing I'm lately using a lot is just paint pencil. Take pencil and then maybe a brush for black heart, and that's it. But I'm, for example, like the one comic I'm preparing, I still have to see with my editor if they agree to go with just pencil. Because there is this idea, some, especially in Japan, between uh, like illustration like drawings and then comic like drawings. And if you do pencil, it might go onto the illustration side, let's say. And I still have to see if they will allow me to. So, if anything, pencil, but it will depend on my editor. Mm. Yeah, and they mentioned some of the uh, reviewers uh, found Waterbell and some of their favorites. Do you have a favorite? I like that one. I like the, I forgot the title in English, the one about like baseball. Which is two friends, and how the friendship evolves throughout time. Uh, that one I I really like, um, and it was uh, quite a challenge because it uh, it went from maybe the 60s to nowadays, and so I did a lot of research for just like a 20-page short story, um, but it was lots of fun. Yeah, I think the name on that one, I think it was Victory. I think it was possibly um, Victory Sign. Yeah, something. Something. Yeah. Victory Sign. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, that one I like very much. Yeah. It was a struggle, but I liked it. So, so we're gonna wrap this up. And now, uh, Ken, I, I have to say, um, this was an honor for us, as I mentioned when we first met. Um, this is a big thing for us. Um, your work is highly regarded, and we regard your work in the highest regard as well. And so, thank you for joining us at Kinder Thank you very much for having me here.